Okay, guys, now I've got another one for you. We, this is going to go up after the why, where, when, how did we come here, or whatever I put the title to be. So, now that you know the history of how humans were created, the next question is, well, how do we have Neanderthal men? Where did ne Neanderthal men came from? Well, remember the other day whenever I did the video on that you can create past going backwards, if you don't know? Well, that's where the whole Neanderthal man came from. Because humans got to what they call civilized mankind, and they looked around, and this is how most science is created. Occasionally, they, they get a piece of the truth, but most of the time they're creating their truth. And this is one of those moments because the scientists came up and said, well, where did we come from? How did we get here? And they envisioned a previous version of humans. And when they envisioned it, then eventually, of course, somebody would dig it up because they created it. So they were creating backwards. They were creating past. And they did that through the whole... Um, monkey through Neanderthal man to walking up humans. You know that thing in every school room with the uh, creationist versus the Darwinian theory? So that whole Darwinian theory, that was created that way. Yeah, it was absolutely created that way. That is not how things were created at all. And a lot of things that humans find that they dig up that's how come they're there is because people get to thinking or talking about or running, you know, right over their mind. And so for you, most of the time, until you get your God headsets back on, it would be very, very difficult for you to tell which was truly something that came down in time or something that was created by going backwards in time. It'd be very hard to differentiate. It's not hard for me to differentiate. They look very different vibrationally very different because of how they're built in vibrational land but for a human looking through the five senses it would be all you know it'd be impossible to figure it out but that's how it's done but that's how scientific work happens they go well we're going to propose something and then we're going to go to proving it well unfortunately that's also how you create shit in the past is by doing exactly that so, civilized man and creating in the past, now I would have to say, without a doubt, civilized man has done more to create stuff in the past than any other group ever. Third dimensional civilized man has created more stuff in the past than anyone else, bar none. Absolutely. Because the higher you go, the more people accept what is. They don't need to prove it. They trust themselves more and more as you go up and up. You, Because you remember, more of a God you are. The more of a God you are, the more you go, I don't care what you say, I know this. And so there isn't that need to prove things. But in the third dimension, with civilized mankind, oh yeah, they had to prove everything. And they did, because you're a God, whether you know it or not. So if you want something to be 50,000 years ago, there was a this kind of being that predated humans and I wanted to be able to find it and prove that they were there at this time frame and this is what they look like you absolutely can do that this isn't because there's no such thing as time this is all make believe so you can absolutely do that and that has been done a lot which is what <coughs> set into place the big science versus um creationist yeah, yeah the the, the uh, religions versus the scientists which really was a big part of the lower levels of 3D was that that split right there. And it took it in many, 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 many ways. There was, uh, shoot, in my lifetime, there was lots of fighting between the Darwinian theory and the creationists. As far as I know, they're still doing it, but it's not as big deal as it was back when I was a lot younger. But it was a major split. And the scientists would get up and they'd say, oh no, we found proof. We found proof over here. And sure they did, but they're the ones that put it there. They just didn't know that. If you get enough energy, and if you have people excited, now you've got one that does that, and they go dig something up and they find something. Now you've got ten other scientists that are going, oh, really? And they've got ideas, and now there's more power to it, and it just keeps ramping like that. To the point that people are going, well, this is the truth. 
Well, yeah, I guess. But it's not accurate. It's not the whole truth. It's not everything. But it is true from your perspective in this moment in time. It doesn't make it wrong. It just means it's not the whole picture. And that's the problem with these videos, guys, is because I've given you baselines, but the big picture around this stuff is really complicated. It really, really is complicated. Now, what else was I going to talk about? Time. Hold you on. said both were backwards creating. Yeah, the backwards. What else was I backward creating? Here. Let you push that button. So I can look at my notes. So hang tight, guys. I wrote these down in the middle of the night last night, and I think I had something else. Yeah, she texted them to me. That's how she saves them. that. Where's the other one? Original humans. Oh, backwards memories. Okay. I think there was something else backward memories that I wanted to talk about. Okay, you've heard, I hope, that eyewitness accounts are bad. Bad for... They're the least. Yeah, they're, they're the least accurate. And I wanted to explain to you why. Is because let's say... Um, you're driving along and you see an accident right in front of you, right? Car crashes, it flips over, something bowls into fire, a bodies go flying out the door, and it's happened right in front of you, and it happens in about five seconds. Okay, the way memory works in a human brain for human, not God self, human self, is that memory has to be played over and over through your brain to create a memory. When something happens like really traumatic and really fast, you don't have enough time to have done that. So what will happen is there are 10 cars watching this five-second event, and then what will happen is the cops will pull everybody over and say, now describe what happened. Well, depending upon what you notice the most, like you really were focused on the, the fireball, somebody else was really focused on the bodies, you could say, no, there was no bodies that came flying out. Somebody else will go, what are you talking about, fire? Because you focus on what it is that dra gra grabs your attention in a traumatic moment. And you will, once you grab those few things that you can do, you do have time for, is you don't have time for the whole event to run over and over because it happens in five seconds, everything stops, Everybody's you don't have enough time, but you do have time to create a memory with bits and pieces of that. So that's the reason why you'll see people go, I don't know what he looked like, all I saw was the gun. That's because that's all they remember, because that's what they keep replaying, is look, looking at the gun in their face. They cannot um, identify who's behind that gun if they never look behind the gun. If they're so focused in the moment, when somebody says, hand me your money, and then you've got a barrel in your face, and they look down and they look up and hand the money, and all they go back is, Gun, gun. They're not going to know who the person looked like. They might be able to remember the voice to know if it was male or female. But they could be completely dressed normal and they wouldn't be able to identify it. Others, probably people who are very used to guns, would could very likely, the other way, look to the race and be really, that be their focus, but not be able to go any further. And then there'll be others that can see the whole body and none of the whole... None of it bothers them. And they can repeat all of that. But you're re what you're doing is you're creating memories in that now moment. Okay, later, okay, even if it's 15 minutes later. 15 minutes later, the cops come over. Tell me what happened. Did you see it? Okay, you've got 15 minutes. Now you've got about 5% of the data that's in your memories. But what you start doing is you start taking those five percent that you've got and you start remembering backwards so you'll take the five things that you've got and you'll start adding things well i know this but probably since this car was on its side in this memory and there was a 
pillar of fire, then it probably got knocked over. So you start filling in those backward memories, right? Well, if it was here, and I remember that, I know that one was there. So it had to have come like this. So you start filling those in, and they become memories. They aren't memories to begin with. They become memories. And the difference of that is, take for instance, I don't know how many people can remember what they ate two weeks ago for breakfast. For me, do I remember what I ate two weeks ago for breakfast? Absolutely not. But if you ask me, I can tell you without stopping, I wouldn't even slow down, I would say nothing. Why? Because I don't eat breakfast. Yeah, I was about to interject and go coffee. <laughs> no. Well, that's not breakfast. You, it's I, my with breakfast. You, with you, it would be coffee. Right? <laughs> and that would be the answer. Not because you remember it. Not because you remember it. Not because I remember it. But because it is a very likely the guess that is going to be accurate. Now, you can go backwards and think about it, and you can create a memory of that. Mm -hmm. But you grabbing coffee in the morning two weeks ago was not enough of a thought for you to go over and over and over it and create a memory. It's not a memory. Now, the difference, that's the difference with humans. If you don't keep those memories alive, they fade. Uh, you know, dead people, people forget their faces, the sound of their voice, what they smelled like, what they look like, does not even take very long. That is the human brain. That is how it works. When you're in God's status, none of that happens. Everything that I experienced when I died 12 years ago is as bright today as it was the day I woke up. It doesn't change at all. Big, big, huge difference. I can see all of it as clearly. It never, ever, ever fades because it's not in my brain at all. I leave my brain and connect to something else outside of it in order to remember all those things, so to speak, or to see them again or to go where I saw them, where I could see everything. That's what I do. I don't remember and I don't put them in the human brain. Human brain is very, very faulty. So you can see how this would create all kinds of problems between uh, families, lovers, children and parents, uh, countries, and even worlds. Because if you are creating, you actually have past memories from when you were in the moment that you were younger. You actually have those. Plus you can create new ones from going frontwards to backwards. If you can change that all the time, which you can, and somebody else is living with you, but they're changing it completely different. And they didn't remember it or fix it the same way you did at all. Now you've got people fighting. That's how that's how people fight. That's how people say, oh, no, creationists, no, 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 there are no Neanderthal men. That didn't happen like that because God created Adam and Eve. And that's how it started. And to them, they will never be convinced of the truth of the other guy. But that was the way it was built to get to 3D. It was all about contrast and different perspective. Driving people to be able to look at it from a different perspective that will create even more perspectives that take you deeper and deeper and denser into the third dimension. Okay. How's that? That seem it? Okay, guys, that's it on this one. Love you bunches, and I'll see you later. Bye now.